Today we have Treason Toting Company. So this is the show we have up. Treason essentially is um, Aaron Jones and Jason Bass, who are the gentlemen up front here. We're kind of taking a different approach. We're going to do this sort of more casual style, which I'm really enjoying. Um, so this show that they have up, this is kind of a really cool sneak peek. Um, this show was put up yesterday. It is coming down right after this event. Um, so we're really privileged to be able to be part of this. And essentially, if you walk around the room, what you're looking at is the design process for them. Literally, this is stuff, like literally, this is stuff from their, um, from their shop, from their work. So we have the drafting table from Aaron's house. This is actually Aaron's sewing machine. These are prototypes. I'm going all the way around to the finished product, which are the, um, the Gordons that are on sale now. Um, so it's, it's really cool. You, um, and you're encouraged to like touch things. This is not like one of those weird museum archives. So you can flip through um, the sketchbooks and um, handle the bag, see the detail that goes into this process. It's really, really cool. Um, so Treason started um, last year. You're about to celebrate your year anniversary, right? Um, and they, it's a beautiful bag. It is incredibly detail-oriented. Um, Aaron went to um, Savannah College of Art and Design and studied fashion design. And so you can tell that there is an eye of design behind this. Um, Jason is currently going to University of Baltimore and getting his master's in uh, business administration. Um, the, the business plan behind this is obviously tight. But what I think is exciting about these two guys and what they're doing is behind the beautiful bag. It's a story that's happening, and we thought of them for heritage um, mostly because of the way that they're approaching the manufacturing process for their bags. So obviously they're not sewing together every bag. That's not like humanly possible. Um, they have to work with a manufacturer, and when that choice came, um, they chose to stay here in Baltimore. And they're going to talk about that choice and um, the manufacturing industry in Baltimore a little bit when they talk, so I'll let them cover that for you. But I think that that choice is a really exciting one, both for Baltimore but also for um, their business strategy and how they start to move forward. Um, there's a lot of options um, when creators take their work to the next level and look at warehouses and factories and those kinds of relationships. Um, the most enthusiastic I've seen them when we're talking about their bags is when they talk about the conversations they have with their manufacturer, which is like totally unique to me um, to see that as a collaboration and not purely as a business exchange. Um, so with no further ado, gentlemen, please come up. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Ooh, hello. Thanks for coming out once again. Appreciate everybody's time. I know it's super early. We were up late doing the show and kind of, kind of still still a little exhausted. A little but exhausted. But thanks, dudes, for the coffee because that that made it work a little bit more. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So um, I'm Jason Bass, and that's Aaron Jones. Nice to meet you. And uh, we already got an amazing introduction, so thank you so much. Um, but. You know, we want to talk a little bit first about how we met. Um, I started a t-shirt company uh, a couple years ago, just on like streetwear, graphic design. So it was, I mean, it's pretty typical, somebody who wants to start like getting into uh, design work. And uh, I was going to a bar as usual to get a drink. And, uh, and I drank a little bit uh, more than, uh, I don't know, a normal person should. So I look at this like super strong dude in the bar and I'm like I know I can beat that guy at arm wrestling oh, man. and I'm gonna challenge him for a shot so and that wasn't Aaron by the way it was like no nope. like, he'd like, lost super he'd decent lost. dude so um do I challenge this guy to arm wrestling contest uh I lose and uh him and I become friends and and I tell him what I do like yeah I'm doing t-shirts and stuff and fashion design he's like well my friend does stuff like that and usually when you hear that story it's probably bs but uh he ended up walking in the door a couple minutes later just calling like coincidence and uh, he came in and showed me some pictures of like boat shoes he, he made in school high heels bags everything so I was I was impressed but 
you know, you see a dude like this walk in, you kind of like, maybe he didn't really make that. Maybe he's just BSing or like, it's not really true. I thought the same thing, though. I was like, <laughs> this is another guy with a t-shirt brand. He wants to do some work. He wants me to show. I was like, dude, this is a waste of my time. Put my tags in, man. Right. You know? <laughs> um, I think a few days went by, and then I sit with my friend at the bar, the mutual um, friend. And he says, you called Jason? I said, no. I'm not calling Jason for what? Jason makes t-shirts. I, I can sell. He's like, no, you should really call him. So I finally called Jason. We link up. We sit down. We're sharing ideas. And before you know it, we're like, dude, this is perfect. You know, perfect dynamic. Um, it's rare that you find someone to connect with, not only just on a, on a drinking level and social level, but on a design level, you know, you kind of connect on another um, wavelength. Style, goals, background, yeah, absolutely. interests, everything. Um, so that actually segued into, you know, over time we kind of got tired of the t-shirt business. And one day me and Jason were like walking down Broadway and we're like, dude, we can't do this anymore. Like, we don't even wear t-shirts anymore. Like, we're loafers, and yeah. we don't wear the stuff we make. And we were actually at a good place at that point. We were selling, uh, we had about 30-something stores selling yeah. t-shirts. Yeah, this so is we like, we, uh, we just lost gone. interest, you know? Yeah, that bored of it. Um, so, <clears throat> one particular day, I was in the studio working, and he comes to pick me up. We're riding down Pratt Street, and I'm like, hey, man, we should start a brand. We should call it Treason. We didn't even know what we were making yet. We were like, Treason, it was just an idea. It was just based on, um, you know, social treason, of course. You know, the idea that, um, that, we, that we can do things that people look at and say, oh, that's crazy. So we consider it committing treason because we're not doing what you guys think is cool. So we're like, you know what, let's keep this going. You know, let's build something around it. So uh, I made a bag uh, with the T-shirt brand. We made a few accessories. We made button-up shirts. He was sewing buttonholes, ruining Picture shirts. That. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we were in this, my small bedroom with the mattress flipped up to the wall. Like, pin, and, pin and pattern pieces to yeah. the back of the mattress. So um, Back to back sewing. Right, right. I'm breaking needles. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we finally, it was like, you know, well, let's make bags in addition to what we've been doing. And um, so after a while, you know, we made the bags and the bags sold out. They did well. So I was like, yo, let's go back to this. But, you know, it wasn't, we made the bags not because we, it was just some whimsical thought. It's because we actually had a purpose for it. We really needed something to carry around our, our everyday needs, our essential items. So it made sense for us to mm -hmm. offer products that, that uh, connected with our, our, our everyday life. Um, so we made one. We made one for the brand that we had at the time. <clears throat> made one bag. Um, one particular day, I'm, I mean, well, I'm a tailor full time. I'm a tailor at Nordstrom. And uh, I had a client at the Four Seasons, and I walk in with a suit on and a backpack. And this guy says, dude, what the hell is this? You got a backpack? You got on a suit. What's your bag? What's your Louis Vuitton bag? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. I was like, you know what? Maybe I should make one. So we made the bag, and the bottom was leather. I was like, I'm carrying scissors. Maybe I need to make something that doesn't puncture. I need to make something that's going to last long. And then Jason DigiGuru over here has every laptop and gadget known to man. So That's I was like, out. you know what? We both could use this. Let's make one. Let's, let's use it. And I carry every gadget known to man. Every gadget known yeah, to man. Yeah, ridiculous even amount. Even things that nobody else even knows exist. I swear my bag's like 70 pounds. Right. <laughs> That's where this physique comes from. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we make the bag. We sold like five of them. And after that, we kind of ran with it. So now we were we into the bag business and we had no idea what we were getting into and we we're like you know what we can't sit and cut bags man we don't have time to yeah so f i think from there like we we tried we had to establish like a process and and how were we going to make that happen you know um knowing that he couldn't make them all by hand he, we also had to co-design um we had to free ourselves up to a space where we can both be creative um and you know we wanted to take what we considered, we didn't have a strategy on how we developed this kind of stuff. So we looked at uh, form first, like, well, actually function first, um, how we wanted that bag to function, then the form, like it was overall shape, design, that kind of stuff. And the, and the fashion piece, um, I know that sounds a little cliche, but, uh, but yeah, those three Fs pretty much work for us really well. And it's, um, um, just to kind of like elaborate when he's saying um, function, like the function portion is pretty much, we, we figure out what the problem is. So if you guys carry something and you figure out like, Oh my God, you know, I went hiking today and I got to put my boots in the car. And they're dirty. And they're going to ruin my car. So now we need a bag for it. So that's the function. We figure, we figure out we need to solve a problem. And after that, the form is just based on the silhouette. So how does it open? You know, how do you carry it? Do you carry it on your shoulder? Do you carry it on your back? Do you wrap it around your wrist? And the fashion is just based on all the cosmetic features. So it's based on color, 
fabrication, how do we make it cool? So if we stuck to this, this basic strategy, we could pretty much applied it to everything we do in everyday life. Um, Even the colors are like that. So we, we stick to a palette of uh, RGB, which mm -hmm. you, know, you can't make any color without those three. And then we threw in black, because black's one of the coolest colors. And it's pretty awesome. So Everybody likes a black bag, of course. So yeah, so we're gonna stick to that for a long time. Do our little, you know, right. just make sense of the brand. That way, at least our consumers uh, will not only start to recognize the shape or the style, but also the color when they see it on the shelf and connect that with trees and toting companies. So it ultimately made a lot of sense for us. Great identifier. I mean, it's uh, it's rare. Not to mention just to you know get back to the the, the idea of trees. That's me. Oh, good job. <laughs> Um, I think it's kind of, people kind of think it's blasphemous for a guy to go into a meeting with a bright red bag or to go anywhere with a bright green bag. So we want to make it that it's okay. Listen, trust me, we can go wherever you want with any color bag you want. Um, yeah. And you know what's funny about that? And you say you're going to make like bags and you see two dudes, they think like you're going to make like a Merce. Merce. Make, like a man bag. Oh, that's our know? favorite one. Merce. It's crazy. When we, we actually did an interview with Fox, we did a little morning segment with Fox 45 and before we... A lot of people didn't see the uh, didn't see the bags beforehand, and and a lot of the crew was just like, "Yo, so what are men supposed to do with bags? Like, it's just it's such a mystery. Like, yeah. like when yeah. when did that become such a disconnect? Like, I have no idea. Like, maybe. you know, it's ridiculous. Like, a man doesn't need Is to carry okay? things. Like, we just need pockets. Right. right. Like, God, we got all types <laughs> of stuff going on. We got we got laptops right. like too, right? Right. Exactly. You know, so. Um, so, you know, we wanted to create something that was stylish and, and functional, something that we would enjoy carrying, but also that creative class would enjoy carrying. I mean, we've run into, um, you know, uh, chefs. I mean, I got a couple chef friends. Um, they need to carry around this stuff. They want to do it cool, not in just a Jansport book bag. I mean, it's just, there's so many, like, just generic bags that yeah. don't say anything about who you are or where they come from or you're not contributing to anything. And we'll yeah. get in, I guess we'll get more into what I mean by that later on, but um, they're just bags that you pick up made out of nylon. Yeah, you know? they're very techy, what we call them. Yeah. Like anything very techy has no character. It's kind of, you know, it's either black and it's got like a red thin stripe. And it's all about the science and the, it's, it's not that serious. Let's just make a really cool bag that has a science. And we define it, you know, it has some character. You know, it stands alone. We don't have to sit around and, and say, oh my God, maybe we should put some extra stuff here. We don't need the kitchen sink. Oh, we definitely need that carabiner over here. The carabiner, you don't even off. need it. Like, what's work. the point? <laughs> That'll definitely break when you go trying to jump off a cliff. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, we like less is more. You know, like, the tradition is um, never fails. You know, if you kind of do things the way they've always been done, you can never, ever fail. And not to mention these bags, you can't recreate them. Can't recreate the wheel. You just change the tires. You know, you just put some new bells and whistles on it. Classic them. silhouettes for the most part. Exactly. But, you know, another thing, like, as far as the fabric piece goes, like, you know, what we were talking about, like, I'm not a big fan of nylon or, or certain fabrics, because, like, like, they don't really tell a story, you know, they don't really wear well, you get a hole in it, it's pretty much ready to throw away. Um, right. Canvas, I mean, it, it, it tells a story, it captures, like, what you've done throughout the year. Um, I, lit I carry, these are weekender bags that are kind of just meant for travel, but I, I treat mine like it's my everyday carry-all, do everything in it, so... You know, the leather's worn. You can tell I've rubbed it up against something. It has that patina, that nice um, shine to it. Um, the canvas is, like, picking up little oil stains everywhere I go. Like, oh, yeah, that was where I had um, some great coffee at the last place I hung out at and did my work at. You know, I broke my laptop open in doobies and had, you know, spilled some coffee. It was, it was good. So, you know, we want to use, use materials that actually... Um, that, that, that tell something about who you are. Right. And we've... And we picked materials from places like, like so this canvas here, this, this uh, duck cloth. Um, for one, we wanted something that was durable. So it's water resistant, fire retardant, mold uh, Mold resistant. resistant too as well. So we found a place in Jersey um, called Fairfield. And they've been around since 1800s uh, forever. So generations of, of owners um, that have made this material. And we were able to get a great price from them. So we used them. The leather comes from a tannery in Virginia. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, and they, I, don't, I don't know how long they've been around for a long time, too. Um, but I mean, the same, same central stories with, you know, with all the sourcing um, we put into the bags. Um, the, the canvas alone, um, it's, it's kind of like your favorite denim. So if you know anybody that wears denim jeans or, and they stand around forever, but they hold oil and character over time. But as far as the sourcing, these families have a story, too, as well. 
which is the same thing that we want to do. We want to be able to create a story for our grandkids at some point to be like, our grandfathers did this years ago. You know, they started this brand, yada, 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 and we're going to keep it moving. Um, but not in a phony way. Like, some, like, you hear from certain places, it's like, they just build this story up like... Or some of people they never met. They're like, oh, yeah, my grandfather, Uncle Rich, and his brother started a brand, and they've been making bottles for years, so now we're making bottles. Like, we don't have those stories. We want to start it here and start it now. Our parents were in a textile. No. My father was a welder, you know, at uh, Sparrows Point and everywhere else. I think he's a second-generation welder. Yeah. My grandfather was an electrician, I believe. That doesn't, that doesn't like... That they doesn't don't even know what bags are. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> In fact, anytime we talk, I think at least in my case, my father's like, well, oh, why don't you make funny. something else? Why don't you do this? Right. Pops, I'm doing this. Right. Like, they think it's funny. They're <laughs> like, oh, time. really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, so a piece of, and then also, like, when it comes to, like, speaking of Baltimore's industry, like, every, I mean, the American flag was made here. Like, I mean, there's a, oh, there was yeah. a big industry here. The like garment industry was one of the biggest garment industries in, in America, was in Baltimore. Um, duck cloth. Yeah. Like, London Fog is in, was in Baltimore. The first number one duck cloth maker was in Baltimore. And now we're here today making bags made out of duck cloth in Baltimore. So the idea is to take some of that history and kind of recreate it. Do the same thing they've been doing forever. Like, you made the wheel, why, let's, why remake it? Let's yeah. keep doing the same thing. When we, when we say making it, we, we, got, we got really lucky because we looked for manufacturers um, all around Maryland. We tried Maryland because, one, it's cheaper for us to get around instead of like having to travel to wherever to find a good manufacturer. So we looked around locally, of course, uh, first, and we had some really funny experiences with a few manufacturers. Oh, yeah. like, mm. One dude, I didn't even tell you this one story, but yeah, one guy just sent me on a wild goose chase in New York. I met with him and I'm like, oh yeah, finally found one. He's gonna make some cool stuff. He does like shorts, so we could probably do some things with that. No, old dude just sent me to New York to walk around the streets and <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> Then we found a second one, um, and this is actually my Wait, favorite is this the story. Asian lady story. Yeah, 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 that was good. So we we found, uh. we found another place in this. Uh, later on, we actually rented space in this studio, but we found a manufacturer. Uh, we walked in, great. I mean, the floor was great. It had everything, all the machinery that you would need. Oh, we were excited. You should have really saw our faces. We were like, "This is it. This is it. This we're is done. it. No we're more good. sewing. No we're more finished. sewing." It's good. And this little Asian lady walks out. She's like, "Oh, hello, hello, hello. How are you? How are you?" And we brought up patterns that we've been working on. Shirts like, made shirt and sewn. We made it was uh, we were ready. We're like we're ready to seal the deal. Right. Like what do you need? What do you need from us? So, little little did we know, little Asian lady has a, has a thing for little baby faces. <laughs> so she's like, you did this? You made this shirt? Oh. So look at you. She's pinching my cheeks. <laughs> yeah. So while she's at first first she starts walking <laughs> through the the pattern. She's like, oh, this is very nice. Very, very nice. nice. So it's going through the, the pattern, she's, in, she's liking his work, but then she's also liking his face, and it goes from pinching this to pinching this. Pinching these. And that's when I'm like, you know what? Take, Take one, one for the for team, the team. Bro. <laughs> do, do what you got to do. I guess you know this. that did not happen, right? That did not happen. That did not happen. But, but, it was a very, very fun experience. Oh, did I just go off? Um, so, all right, we're going to shorten that up. Asian lady didn't work out. We said, you know what, lady for that. <laughs> so we found another factory. And uh, we went in there as a customer, like asking for service, and ended up being really close friends. Um, like the dialogue between us is very, very like organic. Like it's not work. We can go in there, and we can discuss anything. You know, how's the kids? How's your day going? How's your week? Yada yada yada. Let's make something. What's oh, the you best know, vegan cookie? Yeah, right. What's the best vegan cookie can you find? All this crazy stuff. Um, so we ended up making really good friends with this manufacturing company, and they want to grow with us. So now we're in the position where um, we're talking about reinventing something that's been here for years, but we want to stay here. Like, every, when I got out of college, the first thing everybody wanted to know was, oh, you're going to New York, right? When are you going to New York? You got to be in the fashion world, and you got to make suits and all that. And I was like, dude, why can't we make stuff in Baltimore? Like, why can't we stay here and do that? Yeah, and I think that that's a big part of why we called it Trees and Toting Company, because we wanted to fight against that, what people thought was supposed to be done, and and do it the right, what, what we see is the right way. Right. Like, keep it local. Like, we, there's 10 jobs at that factory that we impact. Every single product that we sell goes to those people. Like, right. we see them in the factory, and we run into them at the store. Like, we run into them at the bar, the restaurant. I mean, these are real people, everyday people. They get Absolutely. paid great wages and are worth it, and we know what's happening. You know, it's not some just foreign country we send us stuff off to, and it comes back, and it's 
Who knows who's working on it's it? It's all messed up, or it's got like some kind of stains on it, and there's a language barrier. And then when things are ruined, you gotta fly over there and do What's all. This is like, ethic problem. Like, it's not ethically right to use right. them as a manufacturer. Exactly. But these people, they're they're real. They're very real. Um, even our retailers, like our local retailers, Daniel Daniel's here somewhere. Um, he's been a big reason for our our success in the beginning. We had a trunk show there, and within three hours, we sold 16 bags. It was huge. Yeah. So that jump started us. Um, so that it was, and then it also you look at people. I mean, look at Aaron. You wouldn't think he was a tailor, you know. You wouldn't think you wouldn't look at think that we made bags, you know. Right. And you wouldn't think a bag is for a man. There's a lot of reasons. Like socially, we we went against it and uh, caused it called it treason. Right. And then, now we're to the point where um, we're to the point where we found a lane and we're very comfortable. We feel like we're pedaling. Um, and now this event last night was kind of like the jump start to say, you know, this is our road to capsule, and we wanted to share the story with everybody. Like nobody knows that we were in a bedroom, like, pinning up fabric. He had no idea he'd be trying to sew anything. <laughs> he thought he was going to make T-shirts, you know? So the entire process, and now that we've come to this point, we've established and tried to figure out what we want. And what we want to do is we want to stand out like Domino Sugar. We want to be just as big as Under Armour. We want to have a factory down in the lights that says the Trees and Toting Company. And we want to make an avenue where people who design and people have the ability to create and create with other people and connect, we want to make a space for that. Um, not to mention, like we're, I think at some point we'll consider this an entire lifestyle brand. Like toting right now is just very, very, that's our starting point. But we want to make everything. Like we talk about doing all kinds of stuff. He wants a 3D printer, digi guru over here to make, I don't, God knows I got what. Some stuff to make. <laughs> And then after that, he a says, hey. After grad school, though. Like, right. Oh, yeah, you got to you know do that first. But who knows, man? Like, all right, we'll, we'll right. make it work. We'll make it work. But, um, but that's the future. The future is, like, going in that direction and eventually opening up more space, manufacturing space that is dedicated just to us. It's not split between other customers. Um, and that will probably be with the help of our current manufacturer. Yeah. Um, we're able to just kind of, um, kind of jump in, get the machines, use his expertise to, to kind of transition over and, and get us started quickly and... And he's up for that. We've already kind of talked about that. We're, we're very future-oriented. And this is a business that, of course, yeah, I mean, we want to sign up. That's, it's just a sign. But what that really represents is something for our children, something for um, our, our, whoever's sewing our stuff for their kids. If they're the ones who step up and take that place, that's great. But it's, it just, it's handed down. It's not going right. to just disappear after a few years and be sold off to somebody. Like, we want to keep this around Absolutely. as much as we possibly can. We want to just show people also that, like, Anything is possible. You know, like, everybody's, like, has dreams. Like, we run into people with ideas, and they're like, oh, you should make socks. You should make, we you don't should make this. You should make keychains that say uh, <laughs> jars are awesome. Like, we're like, dude, we don't do that. Like, what are you, what are you doing Somebody at? can do it. Somebody can do it, but we don't do that. But if you do it, you have the ability to execute. And if you execute, you got to work just as hard as we have. We have full-time jobs. And we funded this all by ourselves, all the way up until now. And now we're at the point where, like, you know what? There's no point in turning back. Let's keep going. Let's go to New York. Let's go. Let's to show up. Let's get some buyers. Out. Let's get some buyers. Let's get show some, some love. And um, make something great happen. And make something great happen. Like, we want to give back to the city. We want the city to recognize us. And also, we love the city. We're from here. We know every nook and cranny of the city. We've lived everywhere. We've seen a lot of stuff. And, you know, just growing up here it gives you some kind of nostalgia to know that, like, you built something and the city recognizes you for it. Like, why not give back to where you live? Not only America, but give back to Baltimoreans. And we need that. Yeah. We need that. Stop shopping. Yeah, don't shop on all those crazy sites all over the place. Like, we can, this is local. This is very, <laughs> we can do it here. We can make it here. We can design it here. We can create it. It could be sold here. Like, this is our economy. Like, we own this. Right. So, you know, we're just happy to be able to be in a position to do something, to impact it in some form or fashion. Right. And if, uh, as uh, Katie mentioned before, um, this is our process, essentially. Um, we set this up yesterday, and honestly, a lot of people were saying things like, oh, you guys do this so effortlessly. effortlessly. And we're like, dude, we sweat all day, every day. We're scared to death. We're like, this is not right. We can't do this. We can't show people this. They're going to laugh. This is going to be ridiculous. And at the end of the day, we kind of surprise ourselves. But it, we've actually like conditioned ourselves to actually try to deliver deliver try to go hard as possible you know what who knows what'll happen you know like we went into 16 ton with the with the idea of jason said hey we'll bring four bags i said no bring them all bring all of them what are we gonna bring four bags for this is crazy first time ever seeing the product first time people actually touching it 
and it turned out to be the best thing that's ever happened. Like that opened a new door for us. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> You're welcome, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> but um, all those things, you know, like we build a relationship. We have a great dynamic. The things that he does, I hate doing. The emailing and all that stuff, I can't stand it. The things that oh, I, I do. I love emailing. That's right. <laughs> things I do. <laughs> things I do. He's like, yeah, you know what? I'm not even gonna act like I know what you're doing. No. Nope. Um, but we have a. It's a great. It's a great collaboration. You know, we don't step on each other's toes, and we have slowly but surely we're peppering pieces of the team to kind of make this a well-oiled Will, machine. Will's here. Will Walker. He's been Will uh, very Walker's helpful here. with social media. And yeah, absolutely. Event everything. planning. So, like um, he helped we, to plan this. And uh, one thing you also didn't mention is like all like probably ninety something percent of this stuff is from our house, from our home, yeah. and from our life. Like yeah. so, we didn't just go out and grab things from some antique store. Well, I mean, over time we probably did, but we didn't do that just for the show, you know. Right. Like this, these things sit in my house, you know, except for those chairs. But everything else, pretty much in our right. workspace. That drafting table, he actually sits at every day and sketches and draws. I went home and was like, man, I'm gonna sit and draw on my couch today. I ride that. <laughs> I ride that bike. Uh, yeah, you do. You yeah. do. But um, we want to bring it back here. We thank you guys for coming out, listening. Um, I guess we're gonna do a Q and A. I believe. Cool. Is that right? Thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs>